Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be recommending you my choices of the best luxury bags that you should be looking to, investing in, and you know purchasing for the year 2020. I know this is new, like Luke being positive in a video, mind blown, mind blown. Blown. Before we get any further into the video, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. You can go down below, hit the subscribe button, and turn on my post notifications. I mean, like, what do you have to lose? You're already here. And if you guys want to see anything else from me, you can follow me on all of my social medias down here below. Enjoy. They're there. Go for it. Essentially, I realized that in my infinite wisdom here on Hot Lamote over the past, you know, soon to be five years, I've been very negative. Mostly. And I mean, like, listen, that needs to happen because fashion currently sucks. I realized that, yes, while I need to be that negative Nancy voice in the realm of fashion, I also can be positive from time to time. And I feel like you guys are constantly asking me for like style advice, like, what are the things we should be wearing? Like, Luke, we know what you hate. What do you like? And I realized, okay, you probably should like let people know what you're into. So I'm gonna do that. But today I'm going to be talking to you guys about luxury bags. And for the most part, they are one of the more accessible entry points for a lot of people. Yes, there probably are very few bags that are under $1,500 on this list. But for those of you that have been saving up, for those of you who have the means to buy these bags, for those of you who are just looking for inspiration into things you want to purchase, things that you're looking forward to when you have that money, I feel like it's good to talk about, you know, the bags that are chic. So let's talk about them. Let's do it. First up, the king of luxury bags would be Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vu, LV, for those of you in the know. First up is the Petite Male bag, the Petite Mal. Listen, my French is bad, you already know that. This bag was actually developed by Nicolas Gasquet, who is the creative director of women's wear for Louis Vuitton Women's. So, Nicolas Gasquet really took this whole idea of modernizing Louis Vuitton, and so he created the Petite Mal bag, which essentially is a modern, accessible, carryable version of the iconic Louis Vuitton trunk bags, which the brand has been known for since the 1800s. Now, this is a clutch version of the bag, but honestly, I think it's probably one of the chicest LV bags that there is currently out there. It is structured, which I actually think is super nice. Now, I've learned that the Louis Vuitton bags, that the monogram is usually canvas, but the actual outside, the structured sort of piping is made out of leather. It does come in a range of styles, and I'm pretty positive that every season, Nicola Gesky actually creates custom bags that represent that season that had just come out. But there also are the classic bags in that very iconic, simple, you know, luxurious Louis Vuitton monogram, which I think gives you the best of both worlds. If you want to, you know, invest in a bag that is Louis Vuitton that you know and love, this is great. But also, if you're looking for something a little bit different, every season, Season, a new bag or a new few bags come out with that style and with that aesthetic from that collection that you might have loved. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. Personally, it's my favorite Louis Vuitton bag. Like if I'm going to invest in a bag, that's it. I mean, listen, it's like $5,000. So like, you know, beware, but it's beautiful, okay? Next up is the Moon Alma bag. Now this is a bag that I don't know all that much about, but I have seen it in real life. I have touched it. I'm kind of into it. I don't really know what you would fit in it. My friend did say, she was like, that's a laptop bag. And I was like, oh, that's so chic. And she's like, that's not actually a laptop bag. And I was like, oh, okay. But I mean, if you're looking for like a flat bag, that's sort of like portfolio-esque, you know, that might hold your flat things. The Moon Alma bag is actually very chic. It does come in all different kinds of Louis Vuitton monograms. It has the, you know, brown beige style, but it also has a very chic black style as well. So there is a range to it. There's a range to the flatness. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the twist bag. To me, this is the modern Louis Vuitton bag. It's a very classic. It's a very easy shape. It's not something that's super crazy over the top. People aren't gonna give you dirty looks about it. It has that really, really smart LV buckle that actually is the latch that opens it. So it has the LV, but it also opens when you twist the L and turn it into a V, which to me really speaks to that whole Nicolas Gasquier like modern technology 
technology aspect of what he's doing at Louis Vuitton. It comes in an array of styles. I mean, the most recent one I think is the Epi leather, which is this very like interestingly ridged textured leather. And I genuinely think that there are very few unattractive twist bags. Well, it doesn't really do the whole monogram situation. I think that that LV buckle and latch is kind of this perfect way of saying, if you know what it is, you know what it is. And I think with luxury bags, if you're going to be investing in something, it should be something that like you know about, but it shouldn't be something that has to scream to everybody else. Oh my God, look at my bag. Look at this, look at this. Like sometimes subtlety is very, very chic and being in the know is much more fun. Next up is the final women's bag from Louis Vuitton that we'll be talking about. And it is the Bot Chapeau Souple. Souple? Bot Chapeau Souple? I'm just gonna say it's a boat chapeau souple bag. It is a much more utilitarian version of a hat box bag. The hat box bag I think is very chic, just in general. Like it's a nice bag that even if it's not Louis Vuitton, it's just a nice cool bag that has this like really interesting history in and of itself because it goes back to these very chic, luxurious hat boxes. And so the fact that Louis Vuitton has done it in you know the signature Louis Vuitton monogram is very chic. It is an original of Nicola Gesquet, so if you really like love that NG lifestyle, you think that little beard is sexy as fuck, go for it. And again, it's not as boxy or big as a regular hat box. It's much more versatile, it's much more usable. So it definitely is more bag-like. And it comes in a nice patent leather if you're looking for that instead of just the usual brown and beige Louis Vuitton monogram. So. It's cute. There's only one men's bag that I will be talking about and it is the bag by Virgil Abloh. And now in casual Virgil Abloh fashion, he created the soft trunk, which to me is just a men's version of the petite mall bag by Nicolas Gasquet. Like Virgil's very good at using other people's work. I just think it's a much more masculine bag. It's a much more masculine version of the petite mall bag. It's very simple. It's kind of subtle, but you still know it's LV. I do love the embossing that he's done in like throughout his collections, the embossing is actually very sweet. It stays much more butch but it also keeps a luxurious feel, which I feel like straight men don't always have the most luxurious vibes going on, but it does come in an array of styles. I think the epi leathers are usually quite nice, but I also like the monogram on it as well. If you have a man who's looking for a bag, I don't mind the soft trunk. Next up, let's talk Gucci. To be honest, my recent experience in the Gucci store did not have me falling in love with the brand's bags. Not that there was any bad experience that I had with like people in the stores or anything like that. I just was like, oh, this brand is so overdone, like it's so overplayed and they're playing into this basicness. There are these bucket bags that have like recently popped up, which I actually think are quite cute. I don't love them in certain styles, like the whole Marmont like ridged leather is very weird to me in a bucket bag. Sometimes they don't really close all that much, but I did find this pink and purple ostrich leather style, which like chef's kiss. But obviously like go for whatever style you're looking for, but I think that the pink and the purple ostrich is the chicest of the chic. Next up is the Dionysus bag. To me, this is like the only Gucci bag that I truly respect. The rest of them are all like really bad streetwear remakes, but the Dionysus has that beautiful Gucci monogram, which like in certain cases can be overdone, overplayed, like logo mania to the max, you don't want it. But on the Dionysus, it's very simple. Like you understand it's Gucci, but it's much more subtle than everything else. Everything else is more like in your face, ridiculous, over the top. Whereas the Dionysus kind of has this very simple silver like buckle. It has either like a brown or a black little mat underneath that like accentuates it just a little bit. Overall, it's just a very classy little Gucci bag that I think is of the Alessandra Michele Gucci era. So go for it if that's what you're looking for but it also like kind of reins itself back. It's not ridiculous, it's not super floralized, it's not super like, ugh, disgusting in your face. It's classy, it's simple, and it kind of stays away from the rest of the Gucci pack. And finally for Gucci is the printed tote. These I've only just recently seen and I haven't seen them in person, so I don't know what they feel like, so do your own research there. But I do actually like the idea of a tote. I personally think the tote is the bag of the early 21st century. Like it just, it's it's very chic. Like you carry all your stuff in it, it's great. It's in a bunch of different styles. And I feel like the styles are okay, but I also wonder if for future collections, they will create certain specific Gucci totes that correlate to collections, which 
might entice people more so to buy into a collection that they love, but can't necessarily afford a jacket from or a coat. So I like the idea of it and hopefully we see more of it, but it's just something to keep your eye on. Next up is Bottega Veneta. And I wasn't really expecting to love Bottega Veneta because I've really ripped on their current creative director, Daniel Lee's fashion collections, like they're bad. But going into that Bottega Veneta store, Oh, different level. Like I'm in it to win it. I'm, I'm about the Bottega lifestyle now. So first up from Bottega is the padded cassette bag. It is well padded, which to some people might not be their favorite thing in the entire world, but if you mix it with that really intricate, cool Bottega Veneta braiding, it actually is like very cool. And it has this very like fleshy sort of leather, which you wouldn't normally feel from a leather. And not that I own fleshy leather, but I do actually think it feels really nice. It's something that like, if you're holding it, cause you're intended to hold it as a clutch of sorts, it actually feels really good on your hands. So that's always a plus. Again, the braiding is a brand signature. If you love this whole braided leather style, go for it, Bottega is the place to be. And I mean, listen, it is soft as hell and it comes in an array of colors. I personally love the black. I think it's very chic, it's very 90s sort of minimal but it does come in bright pinks and blues, so go for it at your leisure. Next up is the sponge, which to me, oh my God, it's like if Iris Van Herpen and Bottega Veneta had a baby, this would be that bag. I believe that it is a form of their pouch bag, which was done by Daniel Lee as well in this Bottega resurgence, but it has these amazing leather loops. Every single bag that is a sponge bag is actually one of a kind because you can't accurately place those leather loops exactly the same place on every bag. So that's something cool to know. Like it's a one of a kind bag if you're investing in it. Again, it is a sort of clutch bag, but it feels so good. And people are gonna think you're carrying around like a matted dog, which like PETA may be called on you, but also like you can be like, oh my God, guys, it's just my bag. Like it's so chic, it's so cool. I personally think that if I was gonna invest in a Bottega bag, like this one would certainly give me a run for my money. Next up is the shoulder pouch, which is a much more utilitarian bag from Bottega, but like it's still very chic. I think the drape Draping of this bag is amazing. I mean, even the draping of like the actual handle for the shoulder part of the bag, but also like, you know, the actual sustenance, the place where the bag holds its contents is draped very interestingly. It does have a shoulder strap built in. As we said, it's draped in that leather, whereas a lot of brands usually put like a chain or a strap. That shoulder bag actually is quite thick in that leather. So keep that in mind. There isn't that differentiation of, you know, styles and textures and fabric. It's all the same thing. And I also feel like it feels very professional. It feels very like 90s minimal, like Bottega, but it's also still interesting. You still wanna know about it. And it's Bottega leather, which I feel like is so beautiful and so <laughs> amazing. So I wouldn't be scared of the shoulder bag. And if you're looking for something that's a bit bigger, something that's tote like, that's gonna carry around all your stuff, I would look at the Maxi Cabot bag. It still is in that beautiful Bottega braiding, but it's gigantic so it's actually like much cooler it feels beautiful like i felt one the other day oh god like the bottega leathers are so like they're just they feel gorgeous and it feels like something that you could throw at your laptop books you know keys bag shoes you know a person like your dog whatever you want throw it in there it'll work it'll be professional but it'll hold a lot Okay, so next up we are talking about Peter Du. Now Peter Du, if you guys do not know, is a designer who has started his own label, but he's actually an alumnus of Phoebe Philo's Celine. So the bag that we're gonna be talking about is actually not really like a bag bag, but it is a card case, which I'm kind of obsessed with. It was given to me by the Peter Du team, but like, it's so beautiful. It's this really gorgeous, very simple silver little card case. I've used it like a million times. So the reason that I bring up this bag to begin with is, Going out in the world of New York City where I live, it's very difficult to carry a bag around. Like sometimes you have to get like your bag checked or blah, blah, blah. The card case holds your cards, holds like a few keys and an ID, a, a wallet, a Metro card. It holds stuff inside of it, which I think is perfect and which is what you need. I think that it's actually ungendered because it's just a very simple little strappy situation that you just put over and it's very cute. So like, even if you're going out and you're like dancing and you're like doing all this stuff, it stays on your body. You're not like afraid to lose it. Cause I'm always afraid I'm gonna lose everything cause I normally lose everything. So if you're looking for a bag in that experience that is like high class, luxurious card case -a kiss, this is the bag to go for. Moving on, Dior. 
No, I already know if people are gonna be like, Luke, you're putting Dior on your list. Ah! I am, which is so scary. Cause like, listen, I don't love Maria Grazia, but she's made bags that are okay, I guess. So let's talk about them. First up, we're gonna be doing women's, obviously. There are only two bags on this list. The first is the book tote. I love it. I've said I loved it a million times. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's a great bag. I've seen it in public. I've seen it in store. I've picked it up. I've held it. I really like it. I love that it says Christian Dior across. It's not just Dior, it's Christian Dior. It brings back the heritage of Monsieur Christian Dior himself, which we love. To me, it's also a part of Maria Grazia's brand. While I don't love Maria Grazia's style, what she's doing with the house, I also can't say that I don't acknowledge that she is creating a narrative for the brand in her own image. And that image is to make women less so this object of the male gaze or societal norms and more so allow women to just be women, which like, okay, good point. All right, I, I see where it's coming from. Sometimes I think it's a bit misguided, but I think this book tote is the perfect way. Like you need a utilitarian bag, but you still wanted to say do or on it. From what I know, it comes in an array of styles. It has the very classic, like simple Christian Dior with some like florals, or maybe it says like the Dior monogram, or maybe it just says Christian Dior, but every season Maria Grazia puts out a few bags that actually correlate to the season that also is in the book tote, which I really do like. Maria Grazia's prints are ugly, but sometimes on a bag they can be cute and I'll be honest about it. So if you're looking to invest in a utilitarian bag from Dior, I would say this is it. The next is the saddle bag, which I know people are gonna be like, Ooh, what are you doing? Listen, the bag is sort of chic. I will give her points because prior to the saddlebag blowing up, the saddlebag was becoming quite popular in like the secondhand world on Instagram. And I think that Dior, Maria Grazia and her team really like picked up that slack if you think about it. They could have let that whole trend happen and the Dior vintage bags became their own thing. But I think the brand kind of took control of that narrative, which like, I don't love, but I also think it's a smart business move. And I'll say like, if you're in the business of making money, okay, smart. So I think that they've kind of redone the Dior saddlebag to be much more utilitarian in that same way. It's not just this kind of like tiny pouch that barely fits like a tampon in it. It's something that actually has weight. It holds things. It's not, you know, just, oh, here's my keys in my bag, pling, pling, and like my flip phone. It actually holds a good chunk of stuff. I would say stay away from the monogram, staying away from like that whole Dior, 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 Dior written everywhere. I think just the very classic, simple in leather, you know, saddlebags with the big D on them. I think that's the way to go for it. As for men's, the saddlebag comes up again. And I think that Kim Jones is also very smart. I think he made the saddlebag much more masculine, much more luxurious, much more something that a man could actually see and say, oh, uh, that's actually kind of nice. Should be like gender bags? No, but also like this is the world we live in. So it makes sense. Again, you have that classic shape, but it's much more masculine. It's much more subtle, which I think is good for a Dior man. Moving on, let's talk Balenciaga. There is only one bag from Balenciaga that I think is actually very chic and it is a new bag and it's the hourglass bag. I kind of love the way it has that you know, space where it's shaped in that curve. Like, I just think it's hot. I think it's hot. It has multiple sizes and I've tried both of them on and they're very chic. Like you hold them here, I would say, like on your wrist, it's very like limp wrist gay sort of aesthetic, but it's cute. It comes in a bunch of styles. I would stay away from like the graffiti ones and all that stuff. Like I think doing very classic, simple, like black, pink, that, Cute, very nice, very cool, very like that 80s opulence that Balenciaga exudes. And it also plays into Dimna Vasalia's whole Balenciaga of like sculpture and contour and like how can we make the body big and ridiculous? How do we like change the idea of a bag? Which also harkens back to Cristobal Balenciaga himself. So if you're looking for a bag that has a bit more punch, a bit more intellect, a bit more interest in it, I actually think this is the Balenciaga bag to buy. And that's all for Balenciaga, because Lord knows I'm not telling you to go out and buy shopping bags made out of leather. Next up, Chanel. Again, there's only a few offerings from Chanel that I think are appropriate. First up is the flat bag, but it's only in that jersey. It is of Virginie Viard, who is the new creative director, who I don't love. 
but I do think that these embossed jersey bags are very chic. I haven't seen them in real life. I don't know what they feel like, but from an online picture, I'm obsessed. I want seven, like they come in really nice colors. It is that sort of like poppy 80s sort of style. But again, I, I do think they look really, really nice and they're embossed jersey, which means that those like grids are raised. So it actually has texture to it too, which I think could be cool. Then there is the shopping bag, which to me, seems to only really come in tweeds, which I feel like, again, kind of plays into that whole Chanel thing. I don't love that it says like C-H-A-N-E-L, but I will deal with it for the fact that it's a tweed bag and that's not like another Chanel tweed bag, like my flat bag, oh look at my boy bag. I hate those bags, I think they're so overdone, I think they're so overplayed, they're so tacky. Like having a Chanel bag that's like a boy bag, I wanna kill myself, i just rather die. So I actually like these, again, utilitarian. It has that sort of bigger aesthetic. You can carry a bunch of stuff in it. It's like a bag that you can actually use and not just wear out when you want to do street style photos. You get your photos in front of that fun little pink ball on Instagram. These are brands that I really never thought I'd be super interested in, but here we are with Celine. I love the Canvas series. Eddie Slamet, who has come into Celine, is very much so focused on craftsmanship. Now I've heard that from inside the company, I've heard that from outside the company, like people are really, really impressed with the work that are going into these Celine pieces, from the clothing, to the shoes, to the bags. Now this Canvas series is the only series that I like, I think everything else is absolutely atrocious, disgusting, and vile, but the Canvas series has that very French attitude to me, which I think is what Eddie Slaman is trying to embody for the brand. To me, if you're gonna wear this canvas bag, like I expect you to be hanging out and doing vacationing on like the French Riviera. Like you you look very chic, it's very summery, it's very fun. Obviously I don't think you should buy it if it's like snowing outside, that's not the best way to spend your money. But if you're going on vacation, if you're going to, you know, be summering. If you live somewhere hot, like the canvas bag is very hot. It says Celine on it, so you know it's Celine, but it's not like aggressive monogram Celine in your face. It's very simple. It lets you know what it is. It's very chic. A canvas always is very acceptable. And it does come in an array of styles. There is like, you know, bigger kind of totes. There are very structured totes. And then there are little bags as well. So there's a range of styles in canvas that you can go for. The other bag, which is not of Eddie Slaman's aesthetic or era, is actually the bucket bag, which was developed by Phoebe Philo. It's the only bag by Phoebe Philo, I feel, that is still being sold at Celine, but actually doesn't scream, Phoebe Philo, I'm a basic bitch, aesthetic. I actually think that it's very simple, it's very chic, it comes in really cool colors. And I'm sure that considering Celine is reworking and really developing time to this craftsmanship style, that those Phoebe Philo bags that are still being sold under the Celine name are getting that same treatment. So I think the bucket bag is chic. Next up is Loewe, which honestly is the brand to look for for bags. Jonathan Anderson is so smart. I think every single collection that he does is really brilliant, or at least recently. And I do feel like his bags are incredibly chic, but incredibly intellectual. The first one we're gonna be talking about is the puzzle bag. Now, again, it's a Jonathan Anderson original, like he developed it, but it, it it is like a puzzle, but it comes in this sort of like square log style. But the way that the pieces of leather sort of stitch together gives it that puzzle effect. And now he doesn't just let it be in a black, in a brown, in a red. He, every season actually develops a style for the bag. So. Most recently, there was this whole Western style, which I think is so chic. It's like these Western sort of flares that are sewn onto the leather. Like, it's very, very cool. There was this rugby design, and like, my mom used to buy me rugby shirts all the time as a kid, and I was like, okay, you don't know I'm gay? Like, what's going on? But honestly, now I'm into rugby, and it, it harkens back to Jonathan Anderson's life because his dad and brother are both rugby players. His dad is like a super famous Northern Irish rugby player, so like, he really puts time and effort into those bags. Like, they're just very chic, they're very cool, I really appreciate them. I also think the animal bags are very cool. I think you have the elephant, which, you know, if you love elephants, that is the bag to buy. The bunny, I'm obsessed. There was a shearling one that I saw, mind blown, I need. Like, people might think that you're carrying around an actual rabbit, which like, again, 
that's their problem, not yours. And there is a panda bag as well, so if you're feeling your little bamboo fantasy, do it. I think the animal bags are very cool. I feel like if you're looking for something that's a bit cute, but also luxury, this is the way to go. And finally, the basket bag. I think that Loewe really has taken on this whole like intellectual bohemian sort of style. So if you're a bit more like not basic bitch and you're a bit more, you know, little house on the prairie, I like to braid my own tubas. Like I don't, you know, whatever you like to do as a bohemian person, this is kind of the bag to do it with. It's very chic. It sort of embodies that Bottega Veneta like woven aesthetic as well. If you're not looking for that whole Bottega vibe, like the Loewe bags, they're cool. They're very cool. And even the puzzle bag has gotten some woven styles as well. But the basket bag has that very utilitarian throw all your junk in it. You know, you might be able to pull out like a small human baby at one point if you just lost it in there like Hermione Granger. It's cool. Next up is Givenchy. And Givenchy only really has one bag that is chic and it is the Eden bag. Now this came out during fall 2019 from Claire White Keller, who is the creative director of the brand. I've seen it in real life and I actually was at that Givenchy show when the bag was debuted. It's a cool bag. I really do like it. I like it in that I'm pretty positive it's imitation crocodile leather, so I don't think they actually come in that real croc style, but I think it comes in a regular leather that is made to look like croc leather, which for most people will actually be kind of good because it'll be more affordable. Like croc leather is very expensive, whereas a leather that is imitation meant to look like a croc leather will be a little bit easier on your wallet. Although again, it's a luxury bag, so it's gonna be expensive. There are velvet versions as well. And if you don't know, it was you know quite popularized by Ariana Grande when she worked on her Ari Vanchi campaign editorial. Don't know still. Honestly, I think it's a cool bag. I think it's very chic. I think it sort of embodies that Claire White Keller's Givenchy aesthetic of like, you know, this is a bag and we're gonna treat it like a bag, but we're gonna make it kind of cool. That's how her collections are. So it's a good reflection of the brand. I approve. And finally, this is for all my vegan friends or friends that don't like killing animals, which I respect. Hats off to you, I salute it. Stella McCartney. Now Stella McCartney, the majority of her bags are vile. They're disgusting. They're so, so, so ugly. But the Falabella bag, which is this tote bag that's been around for years. It was like really popular at one point and then it sort of like went dormant. But to me, it's still very chic. I don't feel like it's overdone. And if you're looking for a luxury bag that keeps in with your moral and ethical codes, this is kind of the bag to go for. All of the Stella McCartney bags have that very vegan, very eco-friendly style. So keep that in mind if you're looking for other things. I just think all of those are ugly. The Falabella bag is, you know, great. It's utilitarian. You throw all your junk in it. It's super great. It has those contrasting chains. It's actually very nice. And unless you know what it is, it's very demure bag. You might just think it's a $15 bag off the street, which for some people might be great. Some other people might not be great. So it's really up to you in that case. But that is my review of the best bags to buy for 2020. I think that, you know, there are a lot of luxury bags out there. So be careful, but this is just my opinions. If you're looking for somebody to point you in sort of like the right direction of where you should be looking, I help out. Again, if you guys wanna see more from me, maybe you wanna see a worse bags not to buy, that would be helpful. And for those of you who can't really afford luxury bags like myself, I also am willing to do an accessible bag review and analysis as well. So we can totally do that. Let me know in the comments down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you guys like these kinds of videos where we like go through what you should buy, what you shouldn't buy? Let me know, I'm, I'm about it. So thank you guys so much again for watching. I will see you guys on the next one and TTYL.